Shalom and welcome to episode 058, State of the Union from a Messianic Christian view. This title says it all. This is just a pointed view of not only the brilliant speech that President Donald Trump gave of his great State of the Union speech, but the ongoing things that are going on this year. We are putting this episode together on February the 5th, 2020. We have the impeachment, the Iowa election things going on at the same time. We can still see Nancy tearing up that great speech like a crazy person. Also the negative hateful looks on the Democrats' faces. We view that as the Democrats rejecting the American people. Here at OBA, view ourselves as subjects to the Kingdom of God first and second citizens of the USA. It is from this perspective we made this show. Sit back and enjoy. As always let us know how you feel about this episode. Let's pray. Abba, our Father which is in heaven, holy and Kodesh is your name. Fill the hearts of the listeners today with your spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh Holy Spirit. Deal person to person with the hearts of the listeners. Let them know how this world is a testimony to how they are doing in your Kingdom and the place they will hold there. This is not about being a Democrat or Republican or even an Independent, but simple fact of choosing right from wrong, of choosing you and your ways over those of the evil one. In Yeshua's name we say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to OBA, the Open Bible Association. Tell me like it is. Rebuilding the tabernacle of David that has fallen down. OBA, Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA. OBA, Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water, the troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance, by sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding people that God cares, and all things are possible with Him. Hey, ask that guy what time it is. Yeah, you with stack of Bibles in your hands. What time is it? Can you tell me what time it is? Do you know what time it is? It is Bible time. It's time to get out this Bible, open up the books, and start reading some scripture, and let the kingdom of God come into your soul. It's Bible time. Get all excited, folks. Bible time. Let's have some reading of the Word. Opening the Scriptures Shalom, AC started this Bible study with eight versions. We feel that that may be too many for this section. We cut that down to four versions. The Trio of King James KJV, God's Word to the Nations GW, and the Tree of Life version TLV. We also added the Good News Bible GNV. Due to it is a short reading today even with the added versions, not even long enough for a break. With what we these four versions, we feel we got enough to put this text into a context that you can understand. We will start with the KJV in the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 19. KJV, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands, that shed innocent blood, and heart, that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet, that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. GW, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands, that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet, that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. TLV, six things Adonai hates, yes, seven are abominations to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands, that shed innocent blood, a heart, that plots wicked schemes, feet, that run to evil, a false witness, who spouts lies, and one, who stirs up strife among brothers. 
GNB. There are seven things that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that kill innocent people, a mind that thinks up wicked plans, feet that hurry off to do evil, a witness who tells one lie after another, and someone who stirs up trouble among friends. Shalom and Hallelujah, OBO, Open Bible Association, building up your most holy Kodesh faith and giving you some time to escape the mundane and rest in the Ruach Ha Kodesh in the presence of you who are and Yeshua. Hallelujah and Amen in the name of Yeshua our King, with blessings and love. Be blessed. OBA, Open Bible Association, shining the light on a sin-sick world, giving them the message of Yeshua, the message of hope. This is an OBA blast from the past. This is Louder, baby from episode 044, Elijah's Corner. Shalom, welcome to Elijah's Corner. We are here today to warn that the evil of this day does qualify as prophecy in our day being fulfilled. AC took eight versions of the Bible and made a paraphrase compilation of the Book of Proverbs, chapter 6 verses 16 to 19. He called it the PPC version. Just to bring out the best words of the text, Abba Father said he hates these qualities, written in Proverbs, chapter 6 verses 16 to 19. He made a short square video with them posted the video on Facebook of his biblical rendering of the text. Positive Solutions Feel Mo Better page. This short video was due to what we have seen in the news media this past few weeks. The ongoing, unfair, hateful, impeachment of President Trump. We see all those abominable things being done by the Democrats. We are going to play that short video in this section for you today. We here at OBA would like to warn them that those hated qualities are being seen and manifested in the open broadcasting of those hateful actions they are doing. And it appears to be abominations according to our Father's word. We are calling on them to repent while they can. If they continue in this way, they are not only hurting the country but endangering themselves to be judged by God. We here at OBA pray for revival and instruct everybody to repent. We know and proclaim, this is the way to find His mercy and grace and forgiveness of sins. Our prayers are, Abba open their eyes and help them to see the evil they are doing. We know only they can repent of the hate. We clearly see, the hate, of this man our President Donald Trump. We know you can forgive them if they repent, of their evil actions. Amen and Amen. For those of you that are just listening to our broadcast, this is what this short square video is posting. AC's rendering of the biblical text of Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 19 listing the abominations to Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. Repent PPC, there are six things ye who are hates and when you add the seventh it is a full abomination to him. 1. A proud haughty arrogant look. 2. A lying false tongue. 3. Hands that murder innocent people. 4. A heart and mind that thinks up with the evil scheming plans. 5. Feet that hurry off and are quick to do evil and sin. A false witness that is an habitual liar that tells tons of lies like breathing in court. 7. A person that stirs up trouble and strife and conflict and does violent acts on family and friends. You said you was raised a good Catholic, or was you just doing things God hates to avoid the question that reporter asked for both? We the people have seen it and say does God, both God and us do not like it. We the people are not God, all we can do is tell you folks to repent and vote you out of office. This is just a friendly reminder that there is consequences for breaking the ninth commandment of bearing false witness. All your evil plans will be turned back on, not by me but by God, if not in this life, then in the life to come. As a believer I would say, stop, while you can, repent. I hope you and the Catholic Church can work this out, mostly you and God can work this out, maybe you can, lead you cohorts to, repent, too. Thank you for your help.
Shalom, Hallelujah, OBA, Open Bible Association, building up your most holy Kaddish faith and giving you some time to escape the mundane and rest in the Ruach HaKaddish in the presence of Rehua Yeshua, Hallelujah and Amen in the name of Yeshua our King, with blessings and love, be blessed. OBA Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water, the troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance, by sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding people that God cares, and all things are possible with Him. OBA, Open Bible Association, shining the light on a sin-sick world, giving them the message of Yeshua, the message of hope. Shalom, this is episode 58 for OBA, Open Bible Association, and I am AC. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this message today. It's going to be kind of split into a few different things. I'm going to talk about the State of the Union that uh, President Trump gave, which was very good. Probably one of the best speeches that he gave. And then also I'm going to talk a little bit, not that I'm the president, but Yeshua is the president, the State of the Union of the Kingdom of God. We'll start out with the State of the Union for the country. I thought that was a very good speech. I kind of was you know, watching the faces of the Democrats and of the people that were in attendance. The faces, I'm telling you, if President Trump wanted to make a campaign video, if he took the faces that they would show briefly of the Democrats, man, you would have an excellent campaign message right there just showing their faces. I mean, this has to be the gloomiest group of people I believe I've ever saw, right from Nancy Pelosi to uh, the ladies in white and to the Adam Schiff and Jerry. I mean, you're watching these impeachment managers. I mean, they it was just gloomy, the looks that they had on their face. I get a kick out of that more than anything else. It's the State of the Union, it is in great shape as far as the country goes. As we're seemingly on the right path and the right direction and everything. And I know they're not giving the president any credit for that. But anyways, I didn't want to totally make this a campaign speech, but you know, looking at the faces of the Democratic Congress was something I think that would be the best campaign message that Donald Trump could ever come up with. The uh, disdain and hate, I mean, even on good things, they wouldn't cheer for it. Even Martin Luther King, they wouldn't even cheer for, you know, when he mentioned him or mentioned the uh, a little girl that was going to get a scholarship. I mean, he had so many nice things there that he was saying about people. I mean, I could understand if they didn't uh, cheer for Rush Limbaugh because he's probably their worst enemy and he doesn't get elected. So he's going to be around for a while, although he's sick now, but he's had about 20 years or so to actually mourn at stop and think, this is 2020, I think he started 88. He's, he's had a pretty good long run as far as being radio announcer and stuff. I can remember when he was on TV, he was good. Even my stepdad, who was diehard Democratic alcoholic, like Rush Limbaugh, he would look and say, that's a smart man. And he was. But, you know, here's the whole thing is, and it was kind of funny because whenever you get uh, Ronald Reagan making a speech, he would just sit and cuss for hours because he didn't like Ronald Reagan. You know, looking at the kingdom of God is a little bit different subject. I mean, I try to gauge the kingdom of God, not that I'm anybody that's announcing anything. It's just the kingdom of God. I, I would say I would announce by the ministries that I see, by the churches that I see. I mean, we used to gauge the success of a church, even if it was like a little small church with 30 people. If just one person came and repented, that was a major thing. I still think that it is a major thing. Some of the stuff that I see, like 
with the Iowa stuff, it was kind of interesting to hear what some of these people were saying. One of the persons was saying, he was a young Christian man, I couldn't gauge about how old he was. He looked like he was about 20 or in his 20s. And he was saying that he was voting for Bernie Sanders, a socialist, because he was more Christian-like. And I'm wondering, why would he think something like that? I could never be a Democrat or vote for a Democrat. I'm sure that maybe some of them could be good Christians. How could you gauge something like that? Was that a believer in like the uh, Saddleback Church or like that Rick Warren purpose-driven stuff to where anything goes? Greasy Gracer or something of that nature. I mean, I'm not even sure how that I would describe the person because I never really talked to him about theology. I just heard him make that statement. And I would say for that area of the church, man, that isn't looking too good as far as the kingdom of God. That's kind of like the Democratic Party, the Greasy Grace Party, more akin to Socialist Democratic Party. But you have the fundamentalists, which are doing pretty good. I kind of keep watch on a few ministries that I like. There's ministries like John Hagee. I was watching him on YouTube of a video. And I, I kind of like John Hagee, not so much for the prophetic stuff that he's done, but he has this way about him that reminds me of my first pastor, Brother Owens. The thing about Brother Owens that was really special was that he knew how to give an altar call. He knew how to do that. I mean, it was really good the way that he gave altar calls. He could bring people to the altar really easy. Where there is some preachers, they may be good preachers. They may be able to get them to baptistry or to the river, wherever they're baptizing at. Get them to do it in Jesus' name or Yeshua's name or however the formula that they're using. They may be good at uh, doing stuff like that. But as far as doing a repentance message, and eh, they're not very good at it. I hate to say that, so that's a weakness in the State of the Union on some front. In other fronts, uh, it's really strong. I kind of like a, a few other ministries. Sid Ross, I like his ministry. I like the ministry of Michael Brown. He has a really good ministry. There's, there's some great ministries out there. I was listening to one that I haven't heard for a long time, never was much of a fan of, and that's uh, Van Impke. I never was a fan of of that ministry, but I will say he's held strong and as far as the prophetic stuff that he's taught. He never was one saying Jesus is going to come back this year or that year or anything like that, but he always held to what he believed and I'm kind of glad it was kind of interesting to hear what he was saying because he was preaching about one of the things I find that's really interesting that I hate to hear and that's replacement theology. Replacement theology is something that I would say it you know, is more of a Rick Warren or more of a Greasy Grace type of thing to where that they can replace Israel. They can replace, you know, they don't say church as far as they're not trying to say, you know, some other word for it like congregation or anything like that. But you can say it more biblically fitting. They're just doing that. They think that they can get more people. Well, the whole idea of Yeshua wasn't particularly to get more people in that sense of the word. It isn't just people that join some kind of organization. It's people that get a relationship with Him that He's looking for, that get relationship with the Father. This is what He's trying to do. Well, how do you know they have a relationship? Well, when they start following his teachings and the teachings of the Bible. I mean, if you stop and think, I mean, for a while we as believers were basically the ones that come out of the Pentecostal movement. And that's more than the charismatic movement, just the Pentecostal movement, that uh, first wave movement. The Pentecostal movement never stopped the holiness movement. The holiness movement never stopped the uh, preaching like John Knox and the people being born again and so forth. And giving their hearts to Jesus, the public confessions, they all seem to kind of like be pretty much together for a long time and some separated. So when they became charismatic, they started picking up denominational teaching in a big way. But prior to that, the Pentecostal movement was a movement that sort of united people in even with some of the beliefs that they had because they all were rallying around the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I remember hearing terms like, 
full gospel, full gospel businessman. And, you know, those people like uh, Moshi, and I can't think of his last name right now, but anyways, he started the uh, full gospel businessman and did a big part in the Messianic movement. You know, the full gospel men, businessmen were about the Holy Ghost being part of the gospel, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you had the moral majority, you know, the Jerry Falwells, and that was a good movement as far as that goes. And I remember I registered as a Republican, not on, a, on account of uh, Ronald Reagan or any of that kind of thing. I wanted to vote in the primary for Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson never made it, and I ended up voting for Ronald Reagan at the election, but I don't regret any of that kind of stuff. I mean, I did what I want, wanted to do. I always will. In this day and time, I do not see me voting for any Democrat. They've taken God out of their platform. They've uh, done so many abominable things. If I wanted to see all the things that God hates, they're found in the Democratic Party, and they are openly found in the Democratic Party. Now, I know there's those in the Republican Party that do a lot of things I would consider sin, and there's probably not very many of them that can stand in my state of holiness, which I'm not claiming that I'm all that good. I'm just saying that don't drink, don't smoke, try not to do anything that the Bible says not to do, and, and try to do the things that it says to do. Although we fail and we all need grace, in, in that sense of the word. Now, in the long run, is we have people that are openly promoting sin in the Democratic Party, and some of them think that they're hiding behind that. I mean, and some of these are claiming to even be believers. So I think that my challenge is to anybody is, I am in the kingdom of God and following God, following Yeshua, following His Word, before I can be anything, before I do anything. Does that mean that somebody, you know, a politician has to believe exactly like me for me to vote for? No. But they at least have to some standard, which is, well, let's see here. It isn't so even so much about gun rights, although that is a Second Amendment. It isn't about you know, a lot of things other than what the Bible says. I don't think that I could have, you know, vote for one that supports abortion, or I don't think that I could vote for one that just flat out says there's no God, or I don't think that I could vote for one or ever want to vote for one that, uh, you know, wanted to outlaw the speaking of the uh, ministry of the church. If you are reading the Bible and the Bible is against uh, sexual promiscuity and it's against uh, homosexuality, it's against a lot of things that people try to normalize. And that's the bad thing I think about the Republic, or actually the Democratic Party, and a lot of liberal theology is that it wants to rationalize sin as if it's normal. And they want to put down the people that hold the standard of holiness that God set as if they're not all there or that they're evil or that they're wicked because they say, no, no Satan. When uh, sins are not normalized, then people see that and they don't really want people to know that they're going against God. Some of them will even thank God and all this other kind of stuff like the young man that was there in Iowa. But at the end of the day is God holds to his standard and he owes nobody an explanation of what his standard is. It is spelled out, it is plain, it is the constitution for the kingdom of God, it is the Bill of Rights, the Bill of Rights can be found in the Ten Commandments and it can be found in the Sermon on the Mountain that Yeshua gave. You know, our, the whole constitution is his Bible. It was given on Sinai as if it was a marriage covenant. Now you can either accept it, you can either cling to God, or you don't. I'm not going to tell you that you would be rewarded if you don't. Matter of fact is the whole job is to warn you that you need to do that. You need to cling to God, cling to His ways. You need to get behind the fence of His commandments to where that you can be protected. It's not as hard as you might think. Um, you have all these people in the uh, you know, government today that wanted to make up rules 
and so they would make up new rules. We see them in, uh, on television, on the computer, however you would watch the media that's out there, like C-SPAN or whatever. And the faces that they make and the things that they say are just flat lies and they look at the people as, well, you're going to side with me and I can do about anything I want. I can make up all the stuff I want and just be an outright lie, like uh, Mr. Schiff. I sort of would say, no, don't you realize that only thing that you're doing when you do that is you're making yourself a fool and people can see right through all that you know it's it's amazing to me how can i say that revel they revel in evil you know we rejoice in righteousness and so that's the difference between the kingdom of god and uh, the kingdom of the world. I think I'll leave it at that. And then my prayer would be, Abba, Father, I thank you for this day today. And God, I would ask you to heal Mr. Limbaugh. That I, God, I don't know what the state of his soul is, but that you would give him the opportunity for salvation. And I know that he has supported you in general, in your word. You've never done anything that I could think of that was against your Bible, against your word. Father, I would ask you to just speak to these people with your Holy Ghost and put that spirit of conviction on them, that spirit of uh, conviction on them to where that they will seek you and that we know that you will find you know, they will find you because it says you stand at the door and knock. And it's not as if that you are not trying to offer them salvation. And ultimately, the Bible, your word says that unless you draw them, they can't come to you anyway. So, well, Father, I ask you to draw them, to draw those that would hear this. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Special Report we put this video together after the Senate voted. The good news is President Trump was not impeached. Democrats are whining about it along with Mitt Romney, the only Republican who voted for President Trump to be impeached. We who voted for President Trump are happy about the outcome of the Senate trial. OBA Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water. The troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance, by sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding people that God cares, and all things are possible with Him. Shalom and Hallelujah, OBS. Open Bible Association, building up your most holy Kodesh faith and giving you some time to escape the mundane and rest in the Ruach Ha Kodesh in the presence of Yehua and Yeshua. Hallelujah and Amen in the name of Yeshua our King, with blessings and love. Be blessed. Shalom, Hallelujah, we are so glad you was here with us in this episode. We hope that this program has been a blessing to you that we have given you some time to take your mind off this complicated mundane wicked world and to take you to the sacred and Kaddish kingdom of God. If only for this moment in time and the spirit of the Ruach HaKadosh, if you have any topics or concerns you can find our link to our positive solutions. You'll know that our Facebook page. Drop us a line there. Our link to all our endeavors can be found at our website. 772.com If you have been a blessing, you give us a like and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. As always, thank you for listening. May the Almighty keep you protect and guide you and give you shalom. Yeshua's peace that passes all understanding. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's authority. Amen. OBA Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA.